I don't work for a gun manufacturer and I buy my ammo over the counter the same as you. I decided to put the sandbag videos on hold for right now. I don't know if you've heard about it, but there was a horrible accident up here in the Northeast a couple of weeks ago. An eight-year-old boy was allowed to fire a full-auto Uzi pistol. The gun got away from him. He put a round up under his chin and into his brain and died instantly. The tragedy happened at a licensed range with a certified range officer and the boy's father present. I wasn't there and it'd be unfair of me to speculate on what happened. But if you've ever fired a full auto compact weapon, you can probably guess. I mention this tragedy to serve as a reminder to us all. No matter how smart you think you are, no matter how careful you think you're being, all it takes is one momentary lapse in judgment, one tiny mistake, looking the wrong way for just one instant, and you'll have to live with something like that for the rest of your life. I'm not going to put any kids in my videos for the time being. There are three different muzzle loading systems in common use today. The first two items I'll show you here are kit guns, fully functioning 45 caliber pistols that are only about 25 years old. This first item is a flintlock. You put a pinch of powder into the pan and when you pull the trigger, the hammer pops open the cover and the flint clamped into the hammer sends a shower of sparks down into the pan. There's a huge flash and some blowback out of the pan. You have to be a real purist to fire one of these. It's pretty unnerving having all this go on that close to your face. The next item is a cap lock. It's not radically different from what we use today. It uses a small brass cup that's pretty much the same thing as a primer and a conventional bullet. The hammer slams down onto the cap and the primer charge is directed into the main powder charge in the barrel. There's still a lot of blowback and that bit of a lag between when the trigger goes click and the gun goes boom. This is the Winchester Apex Magnum. It's a 50 caliber inline with a 28 inch rifled barrel. As far as I'm concerned, if it's not made in Hartford, Connecticut, it's not really Winchester. But this turned out to be a pretty nice gun for the money. The plastic stock doesn't suck and though the trigger pull might be a little light for some folks, I really like it. And that recoil pad really helps tame those magnum loads. The inline is the most recent improvement in the ignition system for muzzle loaders. Nearly all the guns in this design use the same primer you find in conventional bullets. They're very reliable and a lot more resistant to weather than the earlier ignition systems. The Apex uses standard shotgun primers. One of the few complaints I have about the Apex is that it's hard to prime even if the rifle isn't equipped with a scope. After you drop the primer down into the action a couple of times, you'll start using the capping tool that comes with the gun. This primer discharges directly in line with the powder charge in the barrel, making ignition a lot quicker. No more hang time between click and boom. I got the gun used for 180 bucks, including the shipping, but once I bought the scope, the ammo, and all the maintenance stuff, I was on the hook for another 200 bucks. The gun comes with a set of fire sights, which are fine for most folks, but I happen to be colorblind and I have a hard time picking out the red dot against the brown and green background. The scope was really more than I needed, but I was curious about the accuracy of this gun. I do use a single sandbag when I'm tuning a scope, and this was my target. The hits at 1, 3, and 8 o'clock are me fine-tuning. Those two dead center lead me to believe you could definitely put rounds in a kill zone at 200 plus yards with this gun. My black powder guru warned me that I'd need to clean the barrel every third round and I can see why. This gun was clean and this is what it looks like after I fired three 100 grain loads through it. Fortunately they clean pretty easy. Just unbolt the breech plug. You can use bore solvent but I found triple seven powder cleans up just fine with simple green. You are going to need a longer ramrod than the one that comes with the gun for cleaning it though. I know you guys didn't tune in to hear me yak. So let's get down to making some noise. The first thing you need to do is make sure the gun doesn't have a primer in it. Next, you're gonna add a measured amount of powder. This is a 100 grain load. A grain is a unit of weight, not volume, but we'll get back to that. You'll set a bullet in the muzzle and seat it with a starter rod. There's no patch and no grease, so the bullet needs to be a fairly tight fit. Be sure that the tip of your ramrod and starter rod are the proper shape for the round you're loading. 
If the ramrod distorts the tip of the bullet, it will seriously affect the accuracy of the shot. Hollow points and ballistic tip rounds use a cup-shaped tip. Most factory ramrods are tipped for round nose bullets. Make sure the bullet's down tight against the powder charge. This will also affect accuracy. There shouldn't be any gap between the bullet and the charge. Install the primer, close the breech, cock the hammer and you're in battery. 100 grain load has about the same kick as my 32 Winchester Special. 135 grains kicks like a 30 odd 6. It's not too bad. If you like smoke with your big noise, you're going to love this. On a calm day, it takes a couple of seconds for the smoke to clear enough for you to see whether or not you hit the target. You can buy the powder loose or pressed into little 50 grain cakes you can drop down the barrel. The cakes are pretty easy to use, but I found the loose powder is more flexible and ignites quicker. The apex is rated for up to 135 grains of powder, and that's all the power I'd ever need. But I know a lot of guys using up to 150 grains. I imagine when you load that heavy, you start to lose a lot of accuracy. A grain is a very small unit of weight. There are 437.5 of them in an ounce, and 15.5 in a gram. It really isn't convenient to carry a little scale around with you, so somebody figured out the volume of a grain and they calibrated a fancy little measuring cup you can slip in your pocket. The skirted rounds work very well, but they're not easy to see. These Hornadays work great and they're pretty easy to load. I stayed away from sabotaged slugs. If I wanted to shoot 45 caliber rounds, I'd have bought a 45 caliber gun. Well, that's all for this episode. I know it was long. I hope it wasn't boring. The next vid will have a lot more shooting and a lot less talk, I promise. Thanks for watching and be safe.